All righty, folks. One rental at a time is a different channel because we bring on experts from across the industry. And this is the one that started it all, Miss Anna Kelly. How are you doing, Anna? I'm great. So good to be here with you today. Four years ago, we started doing these together. Can you believe it? Yes. I, I, you know, I was just looking at my calendar reminders and a week and a half ago was exactly four years from the date that I gave my notice at AIG and went, I can't believe I've created the financial freedom to really be able to do this. And it's it's been amazing since then. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for coming back each week. The audience absolutely loves sure. you. You know what, folks? Leave a comment below. Just tell me how much you appreciate Anna coming back each and every week. Because let's be clear, she doesn't have to do this. So show her some love. Leave some comments below. And we will get into the topic of the day. Anna, I don't know if you saw this. I know you've been out and about, so you probably haven't. But Larry Summers uh, is out saying he fears that we actually need a recession to break the back of inflation. So I'm sure you haven't seen the article yet, but how does that generally feel? Do you think we actually need a recession, two, three, four quarters of negative GDP growth to get inflation behind us? You know, it's, 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 such, you don't mean it as a loaded question, but it's such a loaded question, right? Because nobody wants, yeah. nobody yeah. wants to think we need a recession, right? Some people are going to go, the government wants a recession, but that's bad for us, right? And a recession right. is painful for people. So it's hard to say that we need a recession. With that said, you know, it's very interesting. I, I, as I've watched all of these leaders and former, you know, government financial leaders like Larry Summers, they're all looking at some of the same data, but also different data. And what's interesting is they're either in one extreme or the other. They either say inflation is coming down so fast that we don't need the, you know, pal to rake hikes anymore. Um, and we don't need a recession. And we could have a soft landing if the Fed will stop and pause. On the other side, you have people saying, wait a second, inflation is a monster that has not died yet. And even though it's coming down in some ways, there's still real risks of inflation in certain areas, especially labor and wage inflation, services, potential more energy inflation. And so they think having a recession is actually a good thing because it'll cause the Fed to, to stop and pause, and it'll bring down some of that inflation naturally by creating layoffs, by creating some more fear that gets consumers to stop spending. And if you stop spending, then prices start to fall. So I think Larry's point is, there is inflation that's more um, sticky and that's more likely to be with us and cause higher rates for everything if we don't have a, a pretty quick and, and maybe painful recession um, to help the inflation come down without more rate hikes. So I haven't read the article, but that's where I think he probably is coming from. Yeah, you're so right. I mean, I, I, you know, I read stuff every day. You know, I do a daily financial social. I, I spend probably an hour to 90 minutes re just reading various articles. And you're so right. There's a di there's kind of two paths. And where I break it down is there are some, I'll call them rich people. Actually, I should probably call them wealthy people who are, I think, highly leveraged to variable rate debt and illiquid. Uh, yes. Billionaire Barry is the guy I call him because he's been whining on CNBC for nine months. Billionaire Barry Sternlich is his last name. Starwood is the company he owns. When he brings PowerPoint to a CNBC show as a billionaire, that's not a good look. <laughs> and that's just not. It's just not. And I, I think Barry is illiquid, right? He owns real estate. We all know that real estate's illiquid. But I'm guessing he has a lot more variable rate debt than he probably wishes he had when rates have doubled. That's that's what it that's what it screams to me. And then yes. there are some other billionaires who are in industries like autos and whatnot that are hurt. Right, cost of auto loans are going up, more expensive cars. We have a white collar recession for sure. It happens to be a very much a white collar driven vehicle. So I think there's a lot of that. And then there's the people on the other side. I mean Hilton, Delta, United Air. I mean. Summer travel is going to be bananas this year. Yes. So it's just wild to look at. And then visas numbers, right? Transactions and volumes up 10%. Is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? You know, uh, I think there's one thing for sure when I look at this is this recession or downturn won't be like the last three or four we've experienced, right? Because you and I went through the COVID recession. You and I went through the Great Recession. And you and I have been through the dot-com recession. Yes. To me, all of those were kind of sharp and sudden 
downturns. This is really starting to feel like a rolling recession. So what do I mean by yes. that? Yes. Housing took it on the chin about a year ago now. Transactions down 40%. We clearly seem to be building a base, a bottom. Now, I'm not calling for a, a return, but we're on something that's going to be buildable, right? Transactions, uh, they ticked up last month, right? I think four and a half was the last reported, or 4.44 was the last number. New home sales blew it out of the water yesterday, 683,000. So maybe housing's coming out just as others go in. So maybe this is just a different thing. So we actually never get the negative GDP prints because when you put it all in the wash, it's like below trend, below one, but it's never negative. So maybe this is just a rolling recession where different industries are in and out of the sun. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I am seeing a little bit of that. And it it's very interesting because of how the numbers are presented, right? Their accounting standards are different today than they yeah. were even back in 2008. And honestly, the pain um, that we may be seeing, some of it's still hidden, hidden in the hold to maturity securities oh, and debt sure. on a lot of businesses' books. And so I think there's a lot more pain that hasn't trickled through yet because of the way it's accounted for. And that as those business loans, corporate loans, corporate bonds, uh, real estate loans start to mature to your point in the next year or so, if there's not a way to work out those those loans to extend, um, you know, for values to, to stay elevated, which really is going to require the Fed lowering rates again in order to do that, I think you're going to see this, this um, compounding of, okay, now there's pain here, now there's pain here. The pain is there. It just hasn't really revealed itself, yeah. I think, in part because of these things. Yeah. Um, and because it, it's so funny how finicky – consumers are in the stock market. So, you know, we've talked about the VIX on this show, and it's really a stock market indicator. But with all the craziness and the volatility still out there that, that could bubbles, you know, things that can prick the bubble and, and make it pop and make it worse, the VIX was at its lowest in like 20 years last I week. I saw that. And I, saw I that. actually made my first call against the VIX going up, right? Because I'm like, how can volatility be so low when there's still so many, you know, balloons to pop, if, if you will. So to your point, I think we do see kind of this extended prolonged recession that maybe doesn't go as deep as some of us feared as long yeah. as nothing really breaks in the credit markets. And that's what we're still kind of looking for. If something really breaks in the credit markets and the Fed pushes too high, they raise rates too high, um, and that really causes a lot of these things to break and, and things to have to be sold at decreased values, refinanced at lower LTVs. I think that could make us go from this like nice rolling recession to like a hill where we drop off and it's much deeper. And so I think the reality is, Michael, nobody really knows what's going to happen, including the Fed. Um including guys like Summer, because we don't know the financial system yeah. is so complex and we just don't know what's that next bubble to pop. Do we get by easy and lucky this time? Um, and, and maybe you have a mild recession, maybe the Fed pauses, inflation comes down a little bit over the summer and maybe we're okay. Um, but we really don't know, Michael. And so I think you just have to look at, you plan for the worst. You say, this could be bad. So let's get ready. Let's recession, make ourselves recession resilient. Let's look for the opportunity in the volatility because there always is opportunity. Um, but I, I think to some extent, Larry's right. I do think, you know, bringing it back full circle to the first question, if inflation is something that's stickier longer term, and I think that it is personally, I've talked about the, you know a period of stagflation, which is very similar to these rolling recessions. We have very low growth with elevated inflation. I think we're in for some stagflation for a while. The only thing that's really going to cause that inflation to come down substantially is if we do have a recession. Yeah, I, I that's kind of where I'm at currently. Right, reserve the right to change my opinion, but. It, it just, it it feels that way. And again, for me, you said it earlier, it's all about the consumer. I think the consumer broke on March 13th, which was, I think, the Saturday after S Silicon Valley Bank. We'll start to see those numbers, economic numbers in a couple of weeks, because we really haven't seen the impact of that yet. But yeah, right. we're, we're going to know pretty soon. Anna, where can people follow you? Great. You can find me here every week on your show, and you can find me on social media, Anna Kelly, REI Mom, and you can find me on my website at REIMom.com. Thanks, Anna.